this week, Minnesota says trans rights. And we give it up for the girls at the Gay Oscars. All this and more on the latest. And the gayest. I oh no can't sing that or we're gonna get copyrighted. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to have my iCarly moment, but then I was like, uh, that is probably copyrighted. Yeah, yeah, we're we're definitely. And the last thing I need is for Nickelodeon to be on my bad side <laughs> again. Again, do you Nickelodeon have beef? Oh, you know, it's like this whole thing where like I challenged. Uh, you know, Mr. Crocker to a duel and like I kind of stabbed him in his abdomen, but like fair enough. You know, there's never been any video proof. So, you know, and he's too busy anyway looking for fairy godparents. So mm -hmm. yeah, honestly. Fairy, and also fairy, fairy godparents. What is it? Ah! Tor is it if Victorious is who is the who is the lead role in that? So, uh, the, is it Tori Vega? Yeah. Is that her real name? No. Well, the actress. Yeah, the actress. Oh no, the actress is um, Victoria Justice. I'm such an idiot. Victoria Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I was thinking like that was a Nickelodeon. I'm pretty sure you were originally cast for that role, but you declined. I was. I was. I had you know I had too much going on at the time with mm -hmm. you know being in middle school and. <laughs> you know, probably the fact of I was just starting to figure out that I enjoy penises. Mm. So Never I think early. that, you know, I think that was just kind of like a big part of my life at the time. And I figured that kind of fame would bring some unnecessary attention. Yeah, because really, in that stage of your career, you didn't want to step down. You, you're trying to go up, up and up. Exactly. And, you know, I, you I think you don't want the smaller roles. As much as I would have been able to do the part better, um, I think, in you know, that Victoria did a good job, and I she did her best. <laughs> you know, I I uh, give her credit. She did, you know, she did as best she could, and you know that's uh, that's that's the the business. So you can we, ask. That's the business we call show. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, welcome. You know, enough about my enough about my legal troubles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Should we leave that all out so we don't get? <laughs> no, I'm sure you know. Victoria and I are cool now. Like we, we, we both, you know, we, we, we actually just got. Um, we oh had, my god! Uh, we just got brunch like a couple days ago, so we're yeah. Oh, we're, good we're for cool. you. Yeah, we're cool. She's yeah, she's gonna. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll have her, have to have her on the pod sometime. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to have her um, on the pod sometime. Yeah, Victoria, Talk about that. Victoria Justice, if you're listening. Um, welcome back to welcome back. another riveting episode of the latest and the gayest. Uh, I, my name is, can I help you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, apologies, uh, for the interruption. My dog spotted a squirrel. Um, it's, you know, those bastards. Um, Welcome back. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm sure you already know that. And I'm here with my wonderful co-host, uh, who is going to introduce himself in just a moment. And as soon as I stop running my mouth, then I think we'll really be able to get it on the way because, you know, getting it on the way is just something <laughs> that's like really important about, you know, working in showbiz. And I think mm -hmm. that it's just it's just really such a great thing that I think we can all learn a lesson from. Uh, hey, my name's Josh. So oh, happy to be here. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I want to see how long you're gonna go on for it. That was funny. That was that was an truly an exercise in like communication for me, because I I don't run my mouth that often, like <laughs> the way <laughs> the no, way I'm, that you, I'm just kidding. The way that you just looked at me. Um... <laughs> I don't. I would say you run your mouth. I, I would not say that. Now you Ooh, said it. Hey. You said it. <laughs> hey. Um. No, at all. I think. Well. 
Well, what do you mean it's a, a lesson in communication? I think. Do you think you run your mouth? I don't think so. I think you. Let, I think it's easy to talk to you. I think you're a very easy person to talk to. Okay, that's good. I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad I give off. That Speaking vibe. of lessons in communications, um, yeah, I. How do people understand me when I talk? I need to learn to enunciate. I need to learn the English language. I need to learn to speak with my mouth <laughs> or something. I don't know. What's, I yeah. don't know what I'm going through. I was editing mommy last episode and I was me, like, "What?" Mommy made me mash my M and M's. Do some um before. Mommy we re- made me mash my M and M's. Yeah, before we record, mommy you should, me you should do some like uh, vocal exercises. Yeah, do that's like the um. In the in the theater world, we do um, like yeah. There's mommy made me mash my M and M's, and then you just like sing it up and up and up, and it's mm-hmm. it's fun. Um, Why would you mash your M and M's though? I I don't know. You I know mean, the kind of actually, if you like. No, because then it kind of just makes it. Let's say, like, if you like mashed up your M and M's and like melted it down, right? Could you do some of that, but also same thing. Just do chocolate and sugar. Then that's basically just chocolate and sugar. Why go through all the trouble? That's true. That's true. Which oh, by the way, we have yet to address this. Um, something that I'm sure you guys have already picked up on, but we just for some reason have decided not to mention it. Um, we. We got a our our intro music. We got a oh, remix. Oh, yeah. yeah. How'd you like that? We, I know, right? <laughs> oh God. Um. Yeah. We. You know. For I think for the new season, we wanted to like really revamp everything. So I I think we we just kind of were like, let's give it something. Let's give it something fun. Yeah, let's give it something, something more modern. We wanted like a, a you know remix because this is the latest and the gayest season two, the Electric Pussy remix. The Electric <laughs> Thunder Puss remix. The Thunder Puss remix. Yes, and shout out to um, Mixed by Soundchild, uh, aka. Jamie McDonald, Jamie Brennan McDonald. He did our intro music for season one and season two. And he was really great. He was he was very easy to work with. He he gets what you tell him. And he he just we we couldn't have done it without you. So shout out shout Ellie. out to Mixed by Mac, Mixed by Soundchild. Um truth be told, I have no idea if he has an Instagram or not um so you can go look that up yourselves um, exactly <laughs> exactly listen you, you got you got to work for the things you want in life okay we can't be just handing shit out kids exactly. these days kids these days are so sensitive they don't want to work <laughs> nobody wants to work actually it that's seems like, little... it seems like nobody wants to work these days i mean considering they just like undid child labor laws i think that <laughs> oh i mean did you see about that Yes, I did. Yes, I Fucking did. Deranged, sick in the head, man. Dude, this there's some wild shit going down. I saw like some people on Twitter being like, "These people were like, yay, like these laws got repealed," and like, mm-hmm. someone's like, "Children need to like be children," and they're like, "They can earn it," and I'm like, "Bitch, what? Excuse me, bitch, they what? Can... Had to earn the right to be children? They I we can gotta earn the right." They can... To they can be earn children, it. and so someone's like, "So you want child labor?" And they're like, "Why should we get in between an employer and a willing applicant?" And I'm like, "A willing applicant? How you can't be willing to do very much of anything at those young ages, in my opinion. I don't think you should even be willing. To, you should if be you're... even willing to like take out student. I mean, I don't get, know we if we can't get into it. We can't get into it. I don't know if child labor." forced child labor exactly counts as you know a willing attitude well in my opinion and here's the slippery slope that i see it going down it's gonna introduce lower income kids to the workforce at an earlier age and uh, it's more emblematic of a systemic failure of those children than like 
people will see it as a avenue for children to get themselves out of poverty, but mm-hmm. it doesn't address why those kids end up there anyways. Right. It's all messed up. I think it's 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 all nasty. But this isn't queer quandaries. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is getting t- t- too political too quickly. <laughs> yeah, it, you know the the whole thing was just just fucked. But yeah, half the country just throw in the trash. Throw it in the trash. I've been saying for years that we should just like blow Florida off the map. Like we can we can you know if there's a few a few people that we want to keep, you know we can like scoop them up. Mm-hmm. But like, Disney World can be rebuilt. Mm-hmm. I we think we can, should some scissors. We can rebuild Disney World. We can rebuild Universal Studios. All of those things can be rebuilt. Mm-hmm. That's like basically all that state's good for nowadays. Well, the beaches. Like, I mean, I guess, but like even then, like. <laughs> We go, there's beaches in California, there's beaches in Georgia, there's beaches there's in... There's beaches everywhere. Everywhere. Like, there's... friggin' Palm Springs. Beaches in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Like, oh wait, is Palm, Palm Springs is in California, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I thought I was in Florida. Or no, I'm thinking of Miami Beach. Okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, Either way. But, but even still, you know, which it's been completely taken over by the gays, so... So it's fine. That, yeah. that, that you know... Is... You know, Palm Beach used to be like a premier like vacation destination for like everyone. And now it's like, you know, the the P town of the 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 West Coast. Of the, mm-hmm. It's basically just like where all know, the older white gays go to, you know, get get skin crazy. Cancer. Yeah. Get tan and get skin cancer. Yeah. I want to get tan. I'm so excited for summer. Dog, this is going to be my body, hot girl. I don't. I don't tan. It doesn't happen for me. I am. I'm the whitest of the white and I'm Swedish. So either I burn or I just stay pale because I have only ever tanned once in my entire life and it lasted for me. It wasn't even that dark and it lasted for maybe a couple of days. But I I've kind of just given up on being tan. Um, Aww, <laughs> don't give up. This, let be this spray be a, tans tattoos. Let this be a lesson to you, kids. Just give up. <laughs> and speaking of giving up, let's take a break. Yeah, we should be giving up, damn. Ah. Uh. And welcome back. I hope you had a very restful and wonderful break. I know I certainly did. And now it's time for us to get into our uh, weekly news segment, Queer Quandaries. All right, let's get into some news. Let's do it, Diva. with the news. News. <laughs> I, was to, I was trying to sound like, um, have you ever seen, do you watch Bob's Burgers? I do. Do you, have you seen the the episode when um, Tina tries to audition for the school news, and um, Tammy is like wants to be one of the head anchors, and she when they're doing the auditions she's like, "This is Tammy coming at you with the news, bam news news." I haven't seen that, but I love it. It's a classic. You gotta see it. Um. Anyway. So this one I thought was quite fun. Um, recently, oh, good. a former gay adult film performer, uh, Ruggiero F- uh, Freddy, who went by the stage name Carlo Massi, won a lawsuit against a university in Rome after he says he was sacked due to his career in the gay porn industry in the United States. Um, in 2013, Freddie moved back to Italy from uh, the U.S. to earn his degree in mathematics and oh, in boo. engineering. I, <laughs> I know you. He went from from sucking dick to sucking equations and differentials. Pythagorean um, theorem. Exactly. I which I still have yet to use, by the way. 
Um, he earned his degrees in mathematics and engineering before going to study for his doctorate at uh, Sapienza University, which is in Rome. Um, in 2017, some of the students uh, and then Italian media found out about his past and the story of his former adult career turned doctoral student male, uh, student made Italian, uh, it, it, it made Italian news. Why? Um, according, I guess people found it quite, uh, quite interesting. Um, according to Times Higher Education, it also sparked to cut, uh, discussions around queer rights in the country, which currently has a far right and anti LGBTQ plus prime minister. Um, while he was working uh, in the porn industry, he worked for a studio called Cult Studio. Um, I've never mm -hmm. heard of them. Really? Okay. But uh, when he was asked about the situation, Freddie had this to say. From the porn industry, I have learned the importance of self-promotion. This is something that everybody should learn. You have to let the world know what an amazing person you are because nobody will come looking to find out for themselves. He also said, the truth is that I became too rich and famous to stay interested in that job. Porn being the job. Um, I wanted to grow, and since I couldn't grow anymore in the porn industry, I had decided that it was time for me to do something completely new. Engineering. <laughs> Engineering and, uh, and mathematics. Um, but so... Okay. Yeah, and um, but a judge ruled that. Uh, so he he won the lawsuit because the the university tried to fire him because mm -hmm. they were like, "You used to do porn, no, 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 no." But he sued the university. He won, and a judge ruled that the university has to pay Freddie about twenty six thousand dollars for the unpaid labor and another fifteen hundred for being sacked, according to Gay Community News. Love. I mean, I think that's very cool that he won the little, a little something in there that I want to like, I I'm going to say I am a little bit for being like, I just became too famous and I had to leave porn because I was just too good. For I like, did. Girl, you know, I thought girl, that was, girl. I did. I did think that was really funny. I was then, like, like, I was just becoming too famous. So I, I had to step away and I just, I decided I wanted a more simple life. Like girls, so, so you went out and got uh, a degree in mathematics, engineering, and then you went out and also got your doctorate. Like this is and your like, I this is your idea of a simple life now. You're, and also like you're like not doing like guys up the butt. And he's oh. is he actually gay or is he a gay for pay kind of girly? I actually don't know. I think he was gay. I think he's gay. I'm like 90% sure, but... Um, you never know these days. I was going to say, don't quote me because on that. I actually... I know there's this one... I don't even know his... I, can't, I don't know his name because it's just like... His name's just Aiden. Like, that's all he goes by. Aiden. He was really hot. And oh. I was like looking into it, and he was like, oh, this guy's like a gay for pay. He doesn't do this anymore. And I'm like, well, fuck. Guess I'll die. He's <laughs> like, damn it. I would have... I would have had him. I would have paid. And he has a girlfriend, so like, damn. Oh, damn. I was like, I would have paid. I, I would have mean. Paid. I don't know how much. She, depends on how much you um, would ask for. I was for. gonna say, what's uh, you didn't get to find out. You didn't get to uh, to find out what his, no. his out, hourly rates were. His hourly rates. Yeah. Um. No, I didn't. And also, like, I'm one of those people that like I don't super duper love following straight people if I think they're attractive because like. You end up in this weird, like, fascination that is fake and not real and can mm -hmm. never go anywhere. No, and I, I'm just I like, get that. No, thank you. It's not for me. <laughs> I can understand that. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. According to an article for CBS News by Jim Axelrod, Jess Kegu, and Pat Milton, many military veterans uh, fired for being gay are fighting for honorable discharges. So basically when... The Don't Ask Hotel was implemented in 1993. There was basically this big witch hunt about like getting the gays out the military. 
Right. And there are still like I think it's estimated twenty four thousand. No. Fourteen thousand, a little over. Um, fourteen thousand veterans are still fighting. Uh, to get an honorable discharge after they were picked out of the military for being gay. Oh. Um, and it was overturned on September twentieth, two thousand eleven. So it's it's twenty three. That's twelve years now. There's right. still as many people. And the 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 big big issue is like the Department of Defense and the VA have been trying to like get people to like put in their slips and be like, hey, I would like benefits because you fired me for no good reason. Mm-hmm. But the process takes like forever, and it's daunting, and it's like you could be rejected and have to reappear like in the article there's this one story about this one person who um i don't have the name because i didn't feel like writing it down because i was being lazy (laughs) um but he's basically some i think a pilot was like uh this guy like put his hand on my knee and like kissed me the cheek and it was basically his word against the pilot pilot. Uh, so he got discharged and there was the 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 uh, I think it's like the Air Force jury fired him, and they said that he couldn't like repeal it because of don't gay, don't say gay or not. Don't say fucking oh, hell. Don't, don't ask, ask, don't tell. Yeah, that's just like an ass situation. Um, yeah. And there's one other. Oh, and there's Amy Lambert, who was discharged from the Navy, and she started the process in 2013, and has had little success since then. So, mm. like people who have taken steps, people who have been trying. It's right. still such a pain in the butt to like figure out. Oh, the yeah. I feel like you know people think like the military has come a long way, but there's mm. like because people are still really struggling with crap like this, mm-hmm. and so just because there's a lot more like openly gay veterans or or like you know people serving in the military doesn't mean that these people in these policies aren't still out there trying to like you know go against queer people like Mm -hmm. in the armed forces it's a little they're still very much out there Mm -hmm. it's pretty wild and i know like um uh, there's some troops in like for some reason in uh crane and they got injured while over there. Uh-huh. And I can't remember who it was, but it was a trans um soldier and they like got injured and some like senator or something was like, That's what you get for, you know, being trans military and I'm like, This what the fuck? And like being what? in Ukraine and I'm like oh, Dog, like sakes. disgusting. That's what you get. Okay. Mm. Well Um Well anyway. A former school librarian uh, was accused of vandalizing libraries by, because uh, you know how there's been a lot of stuff going around in the news about, you know, drag queen story time and how some states are trying to get that banned because mm-hmm. um, they don't want drag queens interacting with children. Um Former school librarian was accused of vandalizing and spray painting groomer um, is uh, on like libraries and stuff like that. Well, here's a here's a fun. Here's an interesting twist for you. He is currently now facing uh, charges of possessing child pornography. Mm. Interesting. Charles Sutherland of Tacoma Park, Maryland, was arrested last June and charged with malicious destruction of property and multiple hate crimes in connection with vandalism at two public libraries in Maryland's Prince George's County. Uh, uh, TV station WUSA reports uh libraries in the towns of greenbelt and new carlton were defaced with groomer in spray paint on their entrances in early june despite during uh during nearby uh washington dc's capital pride week the greenbelt library had hosted a pride event featuring drag performers 
shortly before uh, some of this vandalism occurred. Um, in an interview with the police last year, authorities say that he, quote, made several comments expressing his disdain for the LGBTQ plus community and the Prince George's County Memorial Library system while expressing no remorse for what he did, according to the Washington Post. Mm. Um, police said that Sutherland confessed to being behind the vandalism, according to the station. He also agreed to a search of his home, which is neighboring, uh, which is in neighboring Montgomery County. Now he he's been a library at Northview Elementary School, which is in Bowie, Maryland, for a while now, and mm. he was placed on administrative leave. Uh, and this whole child pornography thing happened. He was arrested last June. Um, he uh, he is scheduled to be tried in Montgomery County in April on the child porn charges. Uh, according to WTOP, a uh, local radio station, in August, he is set to go to trial in Prince George's County on the property destruction and hate crime charges. So he uh, he's, uh, he's facing it all. Um, but like when they were so when they were searching, you know, his uh, his house, they discovered uh child-sized dolls several smaller dolls and diapers at his home even though he has no children nieces or nephews um, okay yeah um the document also said that he had child porn on his computer and, and he they worked found... at a Library they found like elementary mm. elementary mm. school library and they found like several files of it um, on this guy's computer. Once again, not a drag queen, not a gay person. Exactly! Married. This is... See, this is Straight the shit... Straight white man. This is the shit that people choose not to focus on. And yet they, they choose to think that a drag queen reading a book to children and simply, you know, bringing them some joy is somehow worse than an an elementary school librarian, someone who has worked for the school for a considerable number of years and who, again, is working with your children, who was doing all this, like, he had child porn on his computer, he had, like, dolls and, like, all this other creepy shit, even though, again, he doesn't have any children or nieces or nephews, like... This is the shit that the people choose not to focus on because they think that, you know, drag queens are worse and they're, like, more groomers than, like, people who are literally, literally grooming children. It's wild. But, you know, fuck my drag, right? Fuck my drag. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know, Diva. Bestie, I don't know about this one. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on to some better news. Um, According to an article for Truth Out by Sharon Zhang, uh, Governor Tim Waltz of Minnesota has signed an order to make the state a refuge for trans people seeking gender-affirming care. So basically, um, Yay. The, governor, the governor of Minnesota, uh, and they're in the surrounding states like Tennessee. Is this Tennessee? I don't know. It said in Tennessee uh, on the thing. Yeah, and they're the Florida. they're the state that's been like because they're trying to get like what was it like they're trying to get like trans people to was there something about like Tennessee trying to get like trans people to like untransition or something like to that to detransition yeah pretty yeah, much yeah 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 and so basically Minnesota become like basically a safe haven state um for trans people seeking gender affirming care and just fleeing from like these crazy trans laws and right. um governor did a uh, executive order so it's more immediate but legislature was already in the process um uh a what's it called a bill was already uh in the process and it was written by democratic state representative lay fink the state's first openly trans legislator so basically 
they ha- the the executive order makes it like an immediate like action mm-hmm. and immediately enforceable but then with this bill or whatever right it is protected like even after the governor is like the, after the the next gubernatorial administration comes in there's no like moving backwards if that makes sense yeah so and basically it protects uh, trans people that move to Minnesota or come to Minnesota, and like, if let's say Tennessee requests that, like, hey, you need to person bring them back to Tennessee, Minnesota's just gonna say no, we're not doing that. Mm-hmm. They're just gonna decline to like do that, which honestly is gonna. Out of the two concerns I have, it's gonna. I mean, obviously, it's gonna make. Can you focus? Um, <laughs> it's gonna obviously cause a lot of tension between the states, right? And like, call into question, like. Especially, you know, in, Wait, like, it's... in the South in general, which, mm-hmm. you know, we know the South isn't exactly um, too fierce yeah. for us. And but I don't. There are a lot of gay people who live in the South, which. Mm-hmm. Oh, tons. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I will just never understand that, but hey. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Whatever. Um, so it's obviously going to, like, cause. There's, I think there's going to be some kind of. A big legal battle coming up about this here soon. I don't know what exactly it's gonna look like or how it's gonna unfold, but it's yeah. something's coming basically. Um, mm-hmm. and also uh, the um, I do know that transitioning and like finding like the right people and the right resources is already difficult as it is. Oh yeah. So another concern that I kind of have is that like people coming to Minnesota, it's gonna be hard for them to like find the things they need because there's so many people fleeing to that state. Mm. So I hope that yeah. there's some sort of they can like something, something they're doing to like yeah like some kind of preparation they can do the influx of people that they're about to get. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's that's understandable. So it's right. good good news, but yeah, no, I mean it's good that Minnesota is taking this stand mm-hmm. amongst all the southern states that just have a generally like icky icky yeah. vibe <laughs> you heard it here first on the latest in the gayest the southern states have a generally icky vibe i mean have you been to the south like been to the south i've been to florida <laughs> i've been to florida i That's can say that south. i've been to florida um well oh, i used to live in georgia Way back oh. in the, I think it's, it's 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 pretty wild down there. I was gonna say Georgia's um quite a state. <laughs> yeah, we be wilding out. Yeah, unfortunately, um, such a beautiful place. So so nice weather, but just it's such a vibes. it's so vibes. sad too because like you know I'm I love um fun fact about me my favorite fruit is a peach, and mm. as we all know. Peach. Georgia's are famous for their peaches. They are. But anyway, speaking of Georgia peaches, let's go take a break. And welcome back. Now, as some of you may know, by the time this episode comes out, it will have already happened. But um, on the day that we are recording this, the Oscars are tonight. Yay! And, yes, and we we have who's Oscar? You know, who who is who is? <laughs> I don't know. I never watched the Oscars before. It's, but... it's Rigor Morris, girl. Rigor Morris. Rigor Morris. Yep. Um, I you know we kind of feel like some of the we we feel like there's not enough recognized you know, en- enough representation for some of the the more campy and the more cunty. Oh, I have one that's the that's more, very like, iconic films, if you will, because we can sit here and talk about fucking, um, I don't know, what's a, was, what is, um, was that movie Parasite, I think it was? It was like one of those. Yes. Yeah, last year. I never, I still haven't seen that movie. Um, I want to, but I'm very lazy. I just, I haven't even bothered. We can sit here and talk about Parasite all day. 
in you know how it got nominated and whatever but the gays we have a different opinion so Mm -hmm. we are here to rank our picks for the gay oscars and Mm -hmm. we have come up with our favorite categories we've got best picture best actress because why should the man go first he shouldn't that's why bitch best actor best animated feature and cuntiest soundtrack because who doesn't love a good soundtrack cunty little soundtrack honestly i mean michelle visage would love she was on the bodyguard soundtrack she was track nine. Do you even know what that is? Do you even know what the bodyguard soundtrack? I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. Nope. I, I haven't. Go. No, but I just know that Michelle Visage was on it. She was on it. She was on it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Let's begin with the nominees okay. for best picture are mm. as follows. Wait. Do you want to do it as like a? We each pick. Like we both give our own. Oh, and then yeah. we pick which and we pick which one. Okay, yeah. So like, we can do that. Okay, okay, okay. And then whoever Ooh. wins the most. Ooh, uh, some, I don't know. Some, some live tension. Some live tension. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. who'd you pick for best picture? Okay. Who'd you pick? So for best picture, I feel like you can't have a discussion about iconic gay movies Mm -hmm. without recognizing a film that may not have been in a lot of people's top 10 but Mm -hmm. it will forever be in mine and that is why for the uh spot of best picture i am nominating the iconic film starring sasha Peterson. Um, who was better known for her role as Alison De Laurentiis on Pretty Little Liars, um, the iconic movie GBF. GBF. Now, uh, for those of you who don't, uh, you just you gotta you gotta see it. So, for those of you who don't know, the film GBF stars a twink <laughs> who gets outed as gay. You know, and one might think, oh no, my life is over. But then all the popular girls notice him and they think, oh my goodness, he's gay. So they style him and they make him over and they turn him into their GBF. And they turn him into like the most popular twink in the entire world in their high school. But then it starts to turn into this whole thing of like, Will he alienate his friends that have been on his oh, side forever? Day one. Yeah. Or mm. will he be the popular new twink of something high school? I don't remember the name of the high school. But Fair enough. GBF. Classic. 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 It, it was for me is between that or Mean Girls. That's fair. For but best pick. I, okay. Fair enough. That that's my that's a that's my submission for best picture, GBF. My, okay. Um, my only gripe is that the twink. Like, if it were like, <laughs> you know, if if I I haven't seen the movie, but if I were making that movie, I'd make it like the quarterback oh. gets out of this game, and he oh. basically goes from quarterback to cheerleader. <laughs> I think that'd be fair. Actually, you know what? Let me. I'm gonna bleep that out because I gotta. I gotta. I gotta make some money moves. Ooh. Anyways, <laughs> get, get on get on your producer gig. Yeah, I got I got. Let me let me call Amazon real quick or right. Netflix yeah. or something. Call Elon. No. Call, I'll, call I'll, Elon. I have some call I have, Elon. I have some I have some words for him, but I'm not gonna tell my movie ideas. Ah, oh, damn. So, my best picture. There's no one particularly gay in this movie, but there are like there's like one like particularly like gay iconish type character. Right. My pick for best picture is Coraline. Oh my god! And partially yeah. because the other mother is, to me at least, I found that I always found the other mother like pretty cunty and like pretty like <laughs> she's just like. And I think it was last year, Jose Teratoma and um, 
Denali both did other mother looks. And when she like turns into like that like sunken like because to me when she turns into like the scary witch lady, yeah, she looks very like model esque because she gets like glimmer and her face gets like more sunken. And she just looks to me at least she just looks a little cuntier. And I, I she's also snatched. just it's just she she's is she she's snatched. snatched. She literally she's she's snatching the snatched. girls. She is, and also like that cat in the movie that talks. Oh come on now. Come oh, on I mean, now. I think I think that cat's gay. I just gotta say, I oh for the cat sure. is giving gay vibes. For I think sure. at least. Oh, absolutely. And just absolutely. how like that that cat is like a gay older guy that just, like just knows it all. Just so self assured, self so confident, and in, like just yeah, been in his like late forties. Yes, but still like looks young He's, though. Yeah, he's not like he's not you know like an old gay yet, but mm-hmm. he's like, I mean, in gay years, forties like fucking. He's dead. Yeah, ancient and yeah. dinosaur bones. He's gotten Botox and filler, but he hasn't had the yank yet. No, but he's getting there. Light work, but nothing in, too invasive. In due, t- in due time. In due time. It's coming. But but he's making some phone calls. Oh, absolutely. He's calling. He's calling Doctor. Dr. Dennis Gross here, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, some famous plastic surgeon from Hollywood. Dr. Zizmo. Um, oh, yeah. Hello, Dr. Oh, yeah. Zizmo. Um, okay, so okay. for... Caroline or... I, you know, <laughs> I, like I will... Mine. I'll hand it to you. I'll hand it to you on that one. Coraline, winner of Best Picture. Slay. Best Actress in a lead role. Okay. I feel like okay, for <laughs> me mine, mine's such a basic ass pick, I've just gotta say that. Mine oh, I I I can't this woman has I think just influenced so many gay men in like their hatred towards other gay men. <laughs> because let's be real, gay men can be awful sometimes. Yes. Um, my submission is Megan Fox in Jennifer's Body. <laughs> I have Megan Fox coming up again later, but, um, don't oh. worry about that. Um, damn, that's... Megan Fox Fuck. and Jennifer. That's so good. Who... Okay, who do you have? Okay, so... Uh, I picked... <laughs> This is going to be stupid because I love this movie, but it's not her best movie like at all. So I picked Sandra Bullock. And you might be thinking something like Bird Box or The right. Heat or like Miss Congeniality. <laughs> like Sandra Bullock and The Proposal. In The Proposal. <laughs> oh I just love that movie so much. It's... And I love the idea of like an, an illegal Canadian has to like get a green oh my... card. <laughs> I, I love that like, idea. And her like I'm down for any something about with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> something about her bullying Ryan Reynolds into marrying her <laughs> is like so fierce, to, which is like it's awful. It's, it's yeah. like I don't think that movie ages very well. But I just like her being like, "You're gonna marry me," or you're basically like, I think she's like, "You're gonna marry me, or you're fired, so I can stay here." And he's like, "Uh, but my family in Alaska, though." And she's like, "I don't care." <laughs> I need to stay in this goddamn country. I need to stay in this. I need to stay in this godforsaken country. <laughs> and I mean, I don't think Betty White like is in the movie enough to be like considered for like the best leading actress. But like, I just that movie's so funny. That's it's such it's such a good like it it, it really is highs and lows. I, I just good. I love it. It's, it, it it's, doesn't it's hold a the candle to fucking top tier rom com. Tom, I just love rom coms low yeah. key, but like. Okay, I, but it, 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 Megan Fox takes it. Megan she Fox slept. in Jennifer's body, man. Ate like, her up. Ate her up. The girls, they're they're eating, literally. And they ate. They ate. And they ate. And left no blood. Well, nope. I mean, oh. a little, a little bit. Just a um, little bit. Okay, best actor. So we'll we'll deal with the men, I guess. I guess. All right. Who do you have? Let's make it quick. I don't want to talk about men for too long. Oh my god! <laughs> Gotta make sure I got the right name for this guy. So for yeah, he, he, he... oh sorry, wait. I oh, think no. he was okay. I... Yeah, I was right for some. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Sorry, I just wanted to, I just had to fact check myself real quick. 
Oh, okay. Um, for me, I, I honestly, like, mine is a little bit basic. Um, it's, uh, it's fucking, um, oh, God, why am I blanking on his name right now? The, the ass, the, 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 the dude who, um, Jonathan Bennett in Mean Girls, who played, um, fucking, what's his, uh, uh, Aaron Samuels, Aaron Samuels, clearly a closeted gay male dating mm -hmm. Regina George. Of course. Clearly. He, if you have eyes. Jonathan, we loved you in the movie, Indeed. but I think even the, I think even the straights could tell, mm -hmm. like you weren't, you weren't fooling anybody. No Never, never, not once. Never, um, not once. But regardless, my my submission would be Jonathan Bennett for, for fucking Aaron Simmons in okay. Mean Girls. <laughs> so, I can't pick which one. I mean, probably the first movie. But this is like also like not a great, <laughs> a very basic pick, but also like a little unserious. I right. think. Josh Hutcherson in the Hunger Games as Peter. Oh, okay. Just because I love Peter so much in that movie, disguising like, he, like... him himself as Moss okay. <laughs> to yes. try to like hide from. And like, I'm now a cake baker, so like, I am like, he's like, we are like the same person, basically. Right. And also, like, he burnt the bread, so like, he'd have to throw it out, but then he like gave it to Katniss, like. Yeah. What That's so sweet. I, I love him what so much. For that. That's, what a guy. What a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Literally. Literally. Peter, literally. Peter Malark. Peter Malark. Oh, My boy. Yeah. And like, I I just think he's so much better than Gail. I mean. Oh, 100%. We, we, we don't got to go there. I think I think Gail kind of falls off at the end of the series. So like, Peter's like definitely like the better yeah. of the two. And I think that's yeah. what that Katniss should have gone for from the beginning. But like, whatever. No. Um, you, you know what? Because... I'll give, I, will, I will give that one to you. <laughs> I will really? Oh my god! I'll give that one to you. I will. I will absolutely. I think. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm not, <laughs> not going to complain. Okay, best animated feature. Um, this one in particular, I think, um, was just like, now if you were a young queer individual. Mm -hmm. This was, I think, a a movie that you may or may not have seen, but mm -hmm. chances are if you had some sisters, they probably knew about it. Or some female friends. Mm -hmm. Which, let's be real, every every gay guy had, you know, a few few female besties. Um of my submission. You had to have. Purely because of the iconic, like, surrounding the character Bibble. <laughs> My submission for best animated feature is Barbie Fairytopia. Dude. Fuck, dude. Just Bibble. <laughs> Bibble. Purely no. because of Bibble. Like, how can you not love that little fucking... Fuck. That, and Bibble's a gay that, icon, oh my god. That little fucking, like, blue and purple-haired gerbil thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn oh. it. That's so good. That's so fucking good. Oh, why didn't I think of, like, a Barbie movie? What was, what was yours? Mine mine is Nightmare Before Christmas is what I picked. Oh, okay. I think it's it, the music slaps. Absolutely. It's just Halloween, cannot the Santa Claus... Yeah. Uh, Sal Sally is one of the girlies. I love her. Oh, we stand. We stand. And I think Jack just like he's just doing too much, and I love that for him. Yeah, and just then doing too much. Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie. Oh, Oogie Boogie is like an iconic villain. I and also, love, I love Oogie. I think Jack is like if he isn't, I think he should be like a bi icon. I was because there's something. The I, I was literally a little was thinking the exact same thing. I was literally thinking the exact same thing. Either bi or pan. One of the two. Something. Think, one of the two. I think he should be a, like, bi or pansexual. Because I could absolutely see him, like, you know, 
sucking some bone. Maybe um, when he was alive. He's getting yeah, getting the bone. But we gotta give it to Bibble. I'm sorry. Like right. I, see, I, I I love the, this is my favorite movie of all time. But like Barbie, oh, damn. Fairytopia. We if we're, guys, if we're talking gay Oscars, it's, come on, Bibble. We gotta Bibble. We gotta. All right, and we're tied. Cuntiest. We're tied. This is the, this is the tiebreaker. Cuntiest soundtrack. Now this is for a movie that truly this this one so my submission is it's a more recent movie but mm -hmm. I think if you've seen it you'll know exactly what I'm talking about every song that is on the soundtrack to me is an absolute banger my submission for cuntiest soundtrack is the Netflix film Do Revenge. Hmm. It's now if you haven't seen it, please go do yourself a favor and watch it. Starring Maya Hawk, who was in Stranger Things. She plays um Robin in Stranger Things and um fucking uh Camila Mendez, who's in Riverdale. Nakabe. They Yeah, Miss um and like a bunch of people who you'll recognize from different like you know modern day tv shows and then it's also got sarah michelle geller a a gay icon you know daphne blake like come on now now come on now As, what's like, the movie called again do revenge on netflix sarah michelle geller is like the headmistress of the school but Every song in that soundtrack is the the movie itself is just incredible. Like just genuinely, I honestly had I not had um, GBF, I may have submitted that one for best picture. But mm. do revenge on Netflix. Every song on the soundtrack is just pure perfection. So do yourself a favor, go watch it. It's it's so good, so 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 good. I'll look into it. All right, who do you have for? cuntiest soundtrack i picked the lion king Ooh, because it's just like it's it's it, it's really like just timeless it is like circle of life can you feel the love tonight uh hakuna matata right and it's just so like campy and like theatrical even as like i mean because also it is on fucking Broadway. Oh, right. Ugh, stretch. And I just feel like I was thinking like so I don't know if you know about there's this thing there's this party in um uh Boston called Full Spin where they just it's like a drag show where everyone picks a song off of an album that is good and right. they just do they just play an album. They just lip sync an album basically. And I think you could do that with The Lion King. I feel like you could. And I it'd could... be like, there'd be highs, there'd be lows, there'd be like, can't be cunty, and also just the whole nine yard. Yeah. Okay. I could feel that. See, I love The Lion King, but I'm sticking firm. Sticking with your guns? I'm it, sticking uh... firm in my pick. Because I just... I, Let me... It, it's so... It has... Like Olivia Rodrigo, it's got mm -hmm. like it's got so many callbacks to like iconic, like old like dark teen rom coms, like some Heather's vibes. It's got some like uh, some fucking Jawbreaker vibes. It's got just so many good like references. And I I think uh okay. How about how about we We let the about... audience decide. Decide um, in think, the comments. I think it, it also looks like this is like a larger like cast of songs. Yeah. And it has like Rosalia, it has Olivia Rodrigo, it has Third Eye Blind, it has the Cranberries, it's Robin. Yeah, I think I gotta give it to you. Yeah, fuck yeah! I think this All is just right. a, a, a really uh, yeah. It just 
It's more impressive catalog, I guess. It's a modern day, like it's I a more it's... Mo- it's more modern, yeah. But speaking of things that are modern, we unfortunately have come to the end. Oh, um, boo, boo! And we're also like technically ten minutes over uh, the segment. Free? Holy shit! But you know what? Whatever. We'll wrap this up quick. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can like, subscribe, rate, and review the latest and the gayest on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and Radio Public. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find all past and present episodes of the latest and the gayest available for free um the day that they come out and you can find the video episodes of this week's brand new episode available every wednesday um every wednesday then please uh check back every thursday for thirsty thursday thoughts on all of our streaming services uh to get into some dirty details and please check back on sundays for a little sunday something to unwind and chillax with us um and then please also go uh check out follow us on social media facebook twitter instagram tiktok at tlatg pod to stay up to date on all things the latest and the gayest and check out our link tree which can be found in the bio of all of our social medias to not only find all our social media links and where you can listen to the show but you can also find some charitable organizations that we are promoting right now and you know get your get your fix um and with that thank you for attending the gay oscars thank you for talking about so much insanity congratulations with us. alex for winning thank you very much um i'm gonna go yeah but you know i don't want all this fame so i'm gonna go get my degree <laughs> in mathematics and engineering <laughs> so i'm gonna go get my doctorate um thanks for joining us And goodbye. Goodbye.